How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Cherokee Ronnie and today we're going to be talking about a dry shaft for your Jeep Cherokee. Now if you lift your Jeep four and a half inches to six inches or however high you're going to go, um, you will get vibration, especially on the newer Jeeps. Um, they vibrate pretty good. Now you can eliminate some of this vibration with a transfer case drop, um, which I included that in the build that we did, but uh, I didn't bother to put it on. It does help with vibration. I've done it before, but I wanted to try something new on this channel, and uh, I wanted to try something different. Um, today I'm going to show you guys how to run a double carton uh, dry shaft on your Cherokee on the rear okay because that's what we want that's the reason why we do it SYE that's the reason why we do a hack and tap because we want to run the double carton dry shaft right so you can get online and buy these things for like 200 some dollars to 300 dollars um, you can get a SYE and a lot of people are scared to do it because they have to take the transfer case apart and a lot of people are afraid to do a hack and tap because you have to hack some of that uh, the output shaft off and then you have to drill a hole in the end and tap it um, and that could be a little bit scary for some people I've done it before it's no big deal and I've done it SYE and it's no big deal but I wanted to do something that somebody could do in their backyard for about a hundred bucks um, if you guys remember the dry shaft in the build that I did, everybody hated on that dry shaft. Oh, I almost got tetanus from that dry shaft. That's the dry shaft we're going to be re rebuilding today. And I'm going to show you guys how you can take a front dry shaft off of a Cherokee and run it on a rear of a Cherokee. Now, I am lifted six inches, around five and a half to six inches. So I'm up there pretty good. So, you're going to see in this video everything just fall into place. Now, if you have a longer front dry shaft, if you have a smaller lift, you may have to get your dry shaft cut and lengthened to or shortened to the right measurement for your Jeep. Now, uh, you can do this at home. You can cut your dry shaft at home if you know what you're doing. I've done it plenty of times. But I didn't have to do it in this case. I would rather spend 50 bucks getting a dry shaft shortened than doing all the crazy other stuff in your backyard. So let's stop rambling. Let's get out here. And let's put this front dry shaft in the rear. So you guys remember that old dry shaft? I went ahead and got the slip yoke moved. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild all of this. Get new U-joints and all that good stuff. Here's the joint that was on it. It's got a little ball and stuff in it. Went ahead and painted up the dry shaft make it look a little bit better and this is the part number that you're going to need to actually do this on your Jeep um, this will bolt right on to the front dry shaft so you can use it in the rear and if you have to you can cut it off the spines go clear to the back but uh, as you can see it it's, it's pretty awesome as you can see it just bolts just like it would on the transfer case side you're going to need those bolts from the transfer case side But uh, if you want to do a hack and tap for less than 100 bucks, you can drill a hole in that, put a washer in it, cut your stub on your transfer case, and do it that way. There's all kinds of videos on how to do a hack and tap for under $100, but we're going to do a slip yoke. But as you can see, I got it up on there, mocking it up. So yeah, this is what it's going to look like on the transfer case side with the slip yoke. Yeah, it looks pretty good. This is from this angle. I do need to get shorter bolts because them are a hair too long. Got the back mocked up and got the front mocked up and I think it's going to work good. So we're going to go ahead and get new bolts from the store and go ahead and finish up this thing and take it for a drive and see how it does. Don't forget to put your boot back over your slip yoke. I just put it back on with zip ties. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward thing to do. I, I didn't want to bore you with a big long video. We took it down the road, 60 mile an hour, 70 mile an hour. There's no vibrations. This thing's awesome. And we're on a double carton in the back. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet seen it each and every time I upload a video. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty, my friends.